Hello everybody, this is Taylor from Otago, Japan. Thank you for joining me today for the inline refractometers for the paper industry webinar. Today we will be going over a couple different models. I'll start with the just briefly um, talking about the paper industry and how refractometers should be used. For handheld, we'll talk about the PAL and MASTER, which you might already be familiar with. And then we'll move on to the inline refractometers, CM Base Alpha, CM 800 Alpha, and PRM 100 Alpha. So let's go ahead and get started. If there are any questions for people that are watching live, go ahead and put them in the chat box on the side. Um, I believe most of you will be watching this afterwards, so if there are questions, you can give us an email and we'll respond that way. Okay, so the paper industry and refractometers. What are you supposed to measure with a refractometer? So in the paper industry, there are a lot of different processes and different ways to make paper, and there's different uh, processes after you make the paper, and so there are a lot of liquid samples that can be measured. Um, I think the most popular are going to be black and green liquor, which is a byproduct when you are separating um, from the pulp during the paper making process. Um, you can measure the pulp itself, not as common. There's sizing agents. Um, the most common is going to be starch. Um, there's CMC and PVA. And then there's also press or blade coders that you can measure the concentration with the refractometer with as well. Um, there's different types of silicones and other coatings and just even more additional chemicals that you can use. So lots of things that you can measure with inline refractometers and handheld refractometers. So why use a refractometer in the first place? So using refractometers to measure different liquids in the paper making process optimizes concentration levels to save on raw material costs. So if you're not monitoring the concentration of all of these different liquids, then it's possible that they're going to have incorrect dilutions, improper concentrations that are going to lead to spending more money, making mistakes, and other things like that. It also improves the quality of the paper itself so that you don't have any um, unevenness or any other issues with machining and whatnot. So it's really, really important to monitor the concentration of a bunch of the different types of liquids. So I think the most familiar refractometer for this industry is going to be a handheld analog refractometer. It's the traditional style. At Otago, we're well known for our master series handheld refractometers. Um, that's where you just put the sample on the glass and put the daylight plate down, look through the eyepiece, and then you can see the field of view is a black background with a scale, and you have to read where that line is on the scale between the white and the blue, and that's called the boundary line. A lot of times with um, samples, especially starch, they're pretty opaque, and it can be hard to get a really clear boundary line. So a lot of people like to go with something more digital because it's easier to clean, easier to use. You don't get um, that uncertainty with looking at a blurry boundary line. It's also a little bit more durable. There's nothing that's going to break off. Um, when you have an analog refractometer, the clear um, daylight plate on the top that you use to press the sample down that um, if you drop it the exact wrong way, um, you could have the daylight plate break off. So a lot of people really like the digital just because it's um, a little bit more durable, easy to use. If you drop it in water or something, it's going to float and there's not going to be any moisture inside. So really great instrument. However, they both are still handheld instruments. And let's talk a little bit why you should be upgrading to inline refractometers. So some issues with using only handheld refractometers, uh, first and foremost is operator safety. I think one of the biggest reasons people started to go into inline refractometers is to just reduce the amount of um, 
of the actual operators going over to the machines. Um, paper plants aren't really known for being super safe or they are always concerned about employee safety. So if they can reduce the amount of um, time that people have to go over there and take out the sample and mess with the equipment, then that means they're going to be safe saver. Also, um, there's human error involved when you have people using the handheld instruments. So maybe they could be interpreting the values incorrectly. Like I was saying before, on the master or an analog refractometer, sometimes the boundary line can be pretty blurry. So you can't see exactly where it falls on the scale. Um, and then also there's things that can happen like they're not cleaning properly in between measurements. Um, maybe they're not zero setting or calibrating it with water every day, things like that. So when you're using an inline refractometer, you can kind of get rid of those um, little human aspects of error. Also, inline refractometers tend to be a little bit uh, higher accuracy than the handheld units. So with higher accuracy, you're saving more on material costs, which is great. Also, you're reducing the labor that's involved. So now your operators don't have to spend their time actually measuring the samples. They have something doing it for them so they can focus their time elsewhere. Also, there's real-time measurements. So in case any concentration measurement goes off or out of spec, you can have it hooked up to a PLC or computer or alarm system to alert you every time something isn't right. Um, also, it is just um, displayed on the refractometer itself. So it's continuously measuring and somebody can really quick look at the display and see how it's doing. So those are the kind of main benefits for upgrading to an inline refractometer over handhelds. So let's talk about a few of the different models. My favorite for the paper industry is definitely going to be the PRM100 Alpha inline refractometer. Um, reason why it's our most high-end accurate refractometer and it's going to work really well, especially if you're doing uh, black or green liquor that is at a higher temperature and you need more durability, then I definitely recommend this model. Also, you can see that it has a separate display and detection section, which works really well if you want to move the display away from the machinery a little bit. There's um, quite a long cable in between them, actually. And so you can kind of minimize people going closer to the machine um, because they can look at the display elsewhere. Also on the detection section, which is the little piece on the right, it has a flat sample stage. So liquors or even starches or whatnot tend to build up on the optical glass part of the refractometer and cause some um, higher than usual measurements. Um, so it's really great to have something that has a completely flat sample stage so that the liquid doesn't build up on the prism and just kind of slides nicely by. So that's one really great um, feature of the PRM100 Alpha. For the PRM100 Alpha compared to some of the other manufacturers in the market, it's a very, very good price for the accuracy that it reads at and the uh, other aspects of durability. So it's definitely um, a really great potential for paper industry. Okay, so we also have two other models that I wanted to introduce to you um, because we do have some customers using them as well. So I think for some other samples um, like star starch or silicones, um, people like to go with more mid-range or intro level refractometers for um, a little bit of the lower cost. So on the left we have the mid-range CM800 Alpha. So that has a little bit less accuracy than our PRM100 Alpha, but still a really great durable instrument. Um, it has the flat sample stage that I was talking about, which is really good. And it is kind of a one piece installation. So the display and the detection area are together. Um, so that makes it simple in a way. On the right, we have the introductory model CM Base Alpha. 
Um, this one has a little bit lower accuracy than the CM800 alpha. Um, you will notice that there is a little dip in the sample stage area where the prism is. So with this one, if you're doing any starches or silicones, you are definitely going to want to look into some other cleaning options that we have. Um, I'll go over a few different accessories that we have that are going to help you with cleaning because that is essential when you're talking about inline refractometers um, and getting those accurate measurements is having a nice clean prism as much as you can. And I know that especially in the paper industry, you don't want to be too hands-on um, when you're upgrading to an inline refractometer. So we've made some easier cleaning options and let's go over them. Okay. So before we get into the actual cleaning accessories themselves, let's talk about how they will be installed so that you know which cleaning accessory you can buy. So for installation, first option we have is a pipeline fitting. So this is where you're going to install it directly into a pipe and then you will install the instrument into the fitting itself. So we have um, three different types of pipeline fittings. We have tri-clamp, which is also known as ferrule, flange, and screw. Um, I have some pictures of the um, example installations below, but it's pretty simple. You just cut out a part of your pipe, and depending on how you want to install it in, you'll pick the right fitting for yourself. Um, one thing I want to just make sure um, whenever a customer is getting the pipeline fitting is that they have the flow going the correct way. So um, in the picture on the right, we have the CM800 alpha, which is installed vertically. Um, if you are installing vertically, just make sure the sample is going from the ground upwards to avoid any air bubbles or anything like that that could happen within the fitting itself. Um, air bubbles or pockets of air are going to cause some fluctuating measurements, so just be careful about that. Next we have the hose connector. Um, I do have some customers that like this option for starch just because they don't have to um, go through the whole process of um, cutting out a piece of the pipe and installing the pipeline fitting. So this is a little bit lower cost and is um, kind of easier to install if you can get your sample running through hoses. Okay, so cleaning options. Um, I believe the most popular one is going to be the ultrasonic cleaner, just because this is the one that is the most hands-off, and once you install the um, refractometer, the pipeline fitting, and the ultrasonic cleaner, you kind of don't really have to do anything after that because it's going to help prevent buildup on the glass prism of the refractometer from occurring. So how this works is on the other side of the refractometer in the pipeline fitting, you'll install it and it will um, send some pulses of ultrasonic to break up or block any um, of the solids from adhering to the prism. So this works for samples that tend to leave residues or are kind of more sticky so that it can help with um, avoiding those fluctuating measurements. So we definitely recommend this for people that want a completely hands-off refractometer. Next, we have the Prism Wiper series. So these are a little bit more hands-on, but they're still a lot better than having nothing. If you have nothing um, installed for cleaning of the inline refractometer, you may find yourself having to remove it to manually clean it more often or having to shut down the entire process and run water through the pipe or through the hose. So having a prism wiper is at least better than nothing so you don't have to take everything apart. Um, the one that I'm showing here is the prism wiper that's designed to be installed with the inline fitting. And you can see on the right, it's installed with the CF Siema base alpha and you can see through the um, side of the pipeline fitting there um, and on the left someone's hand is going to be pushing that in and then having this little rubber stopper kind of come in contact with the prism and they'll turn it to kind of squeegee or to wipe it off so it's really really simple 
easy and quick, doesn't take that long to do, and will help you keep the prism from um, having buildup on it. So then next we have the prism wiper, but this is a hose connector version. So I really like this one too, because um, not only can you use it with the hose connector, which is a really, um, I don't want to say cheap, but a low cost <laughs> alternative to the pipeline fitting. Um, so if it's also on the hose connector as well, um, you get a really great little set there. So it works the same way as the um, fitting version. You'll just clamp it to the refractometer. You'll push it in and turn it every time that you want to clean it so you don't have to take everything apart. Okay, so that was a really quick to the point webinar for the um, paper industry for inline refractometers. I hope this got your brain kind of thinking about how you can upgrade and bring your company more into the IoT era. Um, if you do have any questions, please reach out to us. We are um, always happy to help. We have offices in a lot of different countries, service centers, so we can definitely take care of you in your area. Um, before I end the webinar, I just want to see if there happens to be any questions. Okay, no questions. Well, thank you so much for your time today, and we will see you at the next webinar. Thank you.